I'm Dr. Daniel Kolansky from the University of Pennsylvania, and we're going to talk about cath lab safety. I have no disclosures to report. I'm going to focus on four issues, radiation safety, orthopedic issues, PPE, and a minute on physician wellness. The core principle for radiation safety is that there is no amount of radiation that is good for your patients, yourselves, or your staff, and you should make all efforts to reduce exposure to protect you and your patients. The health risks of radiation exposure are generally those that are deterministic and those that are stochastic. Deterministic effects result in protein damage and are predictable and dose-related, such as producing skin erythema or skin burns in patients or perhaps cataracts in operators. The stochastic effects are those that occur by chance. They may occur without a threshold level of dose, although the probability is proportional to the dose and the severity is independent of the dose. These result in DNA damage and may present as cancers. An example of deterministic effects is cataracts seen in interventional cardiologists. In this meta-analysis of about eight studies of over a thousand cardiologists, posterior lens opacity was significantly higher, and therefore interventional cardiologists are at risk of developing radiation-induced cataracts. An example of the stochastic effects of cancer is this study identifying brain tumors in 31 interventional cardiologists who had had a prolonged period of cath exposure. A variety of tumors were identified with a mean latency period of about 23 years, with cancer on the left side of the brain being present in the majority of cases, suggesting this was from radiation exposure. Now, the radiation dose for radiologic studies is variable, and as you can see, for a full diagnostic cath, with coronary angiography and PCI may range from about six to 20 millisieverts. So you certainly have opportunity to reduce the dose exposure. The sources of exposure are primarily scattered radiation from the patient. The intensity is determined by the X-ray input intensity, which is often proportional to the Kerma area product or KAP. The projection angle with certain angles being substantially higher in dose such as the ileocranial view, and the operator distance from the source. To minimize exposure, we follow the ALARA principle as low as reasonably achievable radiation dose, and we take advantage of the inverse square law with radiation exposure being inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. One simple way to minimize exposure is to pay attention to system positioning. As shown on the left, you should keep the table up and keep the image detector very close to the patient to reduce scattered radiation. You should also minimize beam on, on time using fluorosave in place of CINE or DSA where possible. We are all familiar with protective equipment and we wear lead gowns, lead gas glasses, and thyroid collars. In addition, there is work around lead caps which may reduce brain exposure. And it's important to think about some of the physical protective devices that can be used in the cath lab, such as a ceiling mounted shield as shown here, and a lead table skirt as shown here attached to the table. There are other specific devices which might be considered as add-ons, such as the proprietary rad pad device, which goes on the table or the patient, and the egg nest radiation system incorporating shielding, and also some suspended lead systems. The impact of the lead shield or skirt is shown here in the study by Matter, which showed a reduction in exposure to nurses and technologists, and there is also data that it reduces exposure to physicians. The lead shield should certainly be placed on the table to reduce exposure. Also, table-side controllable parameters are increasingly common, and you should be familiar with them. You can decrease the pulse frequency, typically from 15 to 7.5 frames per second, or as low as four frames per second for simple catheter manipulation. We use this routinely in our lab to reduce exposure. The fluoroscopy dose mode should be set as a default to low dose fluoro and only adjusted higher if needed. The magnification settings should be reduced to get away from high magnification, and you should always collimate in to reduce the dose, as shown in this study. Here, the cumulative effect of all four of these table parameters is shown, 
and adjusting the parameter can reduce the dose exposure by as much as 95% as indicated here. It's also important to recognize other non-radiation risks in the cath lab. And this multi-society position statement on occupational health hazards showed the importance of this. There are a variety of occupational hazards within the cath lab, and we need to invest in infrastructure and in education around this, and ongoing monitoring is important. For example, musculoskeletal injuries are common in the cath lab with a two to seven fold higher incidence of musculoskeletal pain for interventional cardiologists than in non-interventional operators. You should consider preventive measures such as the possible role of robotic PCI or suspended lead aprons to reduce exposure and reduce time in lead. You should always have well-fitting lead and evaluate appropriate ergonomics and cath lab layout in designing a new lab. We should also mention infectious risks, and we know that universal precautions with masks, eye protection, and gloves are important for all infectious risks. And now with COVID-19, there are unique challenges. All possible or confirmed COVID-19 cases should be evaluated, and STEMI patients should have COVID-19 screening performed. However, this should not delay primary PCI approaches to such patients. Full PPE should be used with N95 masks or PPAR and with eye protection. And you should avoid aerosolizing procedures as much as possible. For example, for respiratory distress patients, try to intubate before reaching the cardiac cath lab and avoid high flow nasal oxygen and non-invasive ventilation and minimize the number of staff in the room. All of this and more is detailed in a nice paper by Serlip et al. recently in CCI. Finally, it's important to think about work-life balance as part of the wellness in the cath lab. Mike Valentine talked about tackling the quadruple aim of not only improved patient care, lower costs, and better outcomes, but adding clinician wellness to the mix and recognizing that physician burnout is a real phenomenon. And we should address issues like on-call schedules and time off and improve report processes and efficiency to reduce time spent on the electronic medical record, all of which will improve physician burnout. Thank you for your interest in this topic.